Hi guys, Sean here from DigiDirect. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a camera that's got a lot of people excited, and that's the Pentax K1. Now, the K1 is a big deal because it's Pentax's first full-frame camera. All their previous cameras, uh, digital cameras at least, have been APS-C size. So we've been hearing about the K1 for the last couple of years. It's finally out. We're gonna take a look at it. It has a number of very interesting specs that we'll talk about. Obviously the full-frame sensor, it's a 36 megapixel sensor, so high resolution. It has five axis in-body image stabilization and it's the only full-frame camera that actually has that currently. Um, we'll touch on all those features. First though, let's take a look at the physical body because they've done a, very, a lot of very good things in terms of the ergonomics of the camera. So the first thing we can see when looking at the body is that it is a very rugged body. It is fully weather sealed. Uh, at the front, it's got the, the lens mount, which is a K lens mount. Um, the next thing that we notice is that there are a lot of buttons and dials on the body. And this is, I think, one of the, the best strengths of the ergonomics of this camera, is that almost every major control that you might want to access has a physical button somewhere on the body. And when you first look at it, it seems like they're kind of a lot all over the place, but they're really all very intelligently placed, easy to get at. Um, within just you know the first hour or so of shooting with the K1, I was easily, I was barely going into the menus. I was changing all my major settings just with the physical buttons, which really goes a long way to, to you know to letting you shoot faster, staying out of menus, just enjoy the shooting experience, and not get bogged down with operating the camera so much. Uh, in particular, a really good implementation that they've done here is this dual control dial on the top right. So the, the dial on the bottom right here is just going to be controlling different settings, but the settings that it controls is going to be dependent on this other dial uh, right here. So I can set it to control nothing if I want, but I can also have it be exposure compensation or ISO or so on. Now, that means I don't have to go into the menus to change the, the function of this dial. I just quickly flip it on top to whatever I want with the one dial, and now that dial controls that feature for me. Um, I found that to be a really quick way to quickly jump between different settings and so on without, again, getting bogged down in menus. So really good marks in terms of ergonomics for me uh, from the K1 body. Really, really good in that regard. One other little point about the physical body is just the articulating screen at the back. Pentax has, have implemented this interesting little, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but this little mechanism to adjust the screen, which gives you a little bit more flexibility in screen adjustment than most traditional articulating screens. Okay, so let's talk about the sensor a little bit. So I mentioned it's full frame, so that is obviously a big, big deal. Um, for those of you not super clear on the difference between full frame and APS-C size sensors, so an APS-C size sensor is something that all the other Pentax bodies have, something like a Canon 7D, Nikon D7100. Um, a full frame sensor is the same size as 35 millimeter film. So if you ever shot with film cameras, that's what a full frame sensor is replicating. And in digital terms, this means that full frame sensors have better low light performance than APS-C size sensors. Uh, you get more shallow depth of field, Overall, you get better picture quality. Full frame is generally the professional's choice in terms of uh, their camera. Uh, so that makes a big difference in the K1, obviously. I mentioned that it's a 36 megapixel uh, sensor. So that's very high resolution. Most cameras these days are around the kind of 20, 24 megapixels with a couple exceptions. Um, but this puts it, the K1 on par with, for example, the Nikon D810, which is Nikon's, um, aside from the D5, their top of the line, uh, full frame DSLR. So, you know, very good for if you're doing any large prints uh, of your photos, if you're doing any extreme cropping into the photos. Uh, landscape photographers tend to like to have very high resolution photos. Uh, so that's really cool to see on the K1. Another interesting tidbit about the uh, sensor in the K1 is that there is no anti-aliasing filter on it. So the lack of an anti-aliasing filter is something that people have been kind of wanting uh, more often these days. Uh, those filters, they help remove moiré and aliasing, which is that kind of weird pattern you get when you have like a, a brick wall or a close-knit shirt, for example. Um, but they reduce the clarity of the photos a little bit more. So recently, a lot of people have been trying to get cameras without those filters because the photos are a little bit sharper. Uh, so that is uh, the lack of an anti-aliasing filter is on the K1, but it can use its, anti, uh, its sensor shift uh, technology to replicate or simulate uh, an anti-aliasing filter if you are in a situation where you want to remove some moiré. So that segues nicely into talking about the in-body image stabilization on the K1. So the sensor itself is image stabilized. It's five axis image stabilization, and it's rated to be effective at up to five stops, which is a significant amount of stabilization. 
Now we've seen in-body image stabilization on some other cameras in the past like Olympus and Pentax's other cameras as well, but this is the first time that we've seen it implemented on a full frame DSLR, which is a big deal. The in-body image stabilization does a lot to improve your photos and videos. Um, for photos, it means that you can shoot at a much lower shutter speed because it removes a lot of the handshake that you might have. Um, this means that you can shoot in lower light conditions because you can have a lower shutter speed. Uh, for video, it means that, again, you can do more handheld work, eliminates your handshake, gives you smoother pans and tilts and so on when you're just using it handheld. So a lot of different applications where the image stabilization goes a long way. And again, the fact that it's the only full frame DSLR with that image stabilization, it's pretty significant. So they have actually implemented this sensor shift technology, which is what is the basis of the image stabilization in a number of other clever ways. Uh, there's something called pixel shift resolution uh, mode where you take a photo and it actually takes four consecutive photos, slightly moving the sensor each time. It then blends them together and gives you a photo that has much better color resolution. So this is something that landscape photographers in particular will, uh, will definitely enjoy. Um, it also gives you a little bit less noise in the photo because it uh, averages out the noise. Uh, and interestingly, you can actually do that while shooting handheld. It doesn't only have to be shot from a tripod. They also have horizon correction where the sensor can shift a little bit to make sure that the horizon is level if you were a little bit off. And they have something called Astro Tracer, which uses a combination of the GPS built into the body with the sensor shift to when you're shooting uh, star trails to move the sensor slightly throughout the shot so that you can shoot a, a long exposure for up to five minutes that will eliminate star trails. So a lot of very cool different ways that they've implemented this sensor shift technology other than just the image stabilization. So a couple other features on the K1, uh, it does have 33 autofocus points, so pretty good spread of autofocus points. Uh, and the points are effective at up to three stops underexposed. So that means that they're gonna continue to perform well in low light conditions. So if you're maybe a wedding photographer, shooting indoor receptions, concert photographer, anything where you're shooting in low light, the autofocus is still gonna be pretty effective in fairly low light conditions which a lot of cameras have trouble with. So uh, that's very cool to see. It also has a uh, 4.4 frames per second high speed shooting. Now, if you go into APS-C crop mode, which is a mode that uh, replicates an APS-C size sensor, this jumps up to 6.5 frames per second. And I should mention when you're in APS-C mode, it takes 15 megapixel uh, stills rather than the, the full frame 36 megapixel stills. So lastly, I'll touch on the video capabilities of the K1. Uh, it does shoot at 1080p at up to 30 frames per second uh, progressive scan. Uh, it does have a, an external mic input and a headphone jack, so you can plug in an external mic and monitor that audio. Uh, I already mentioned that the image stabilization does work in video, which is a significant uh, advantage. Um, so, you know, they've done some, some good improvements to video. Uh, it's definitely not a video-centric camera, but it's certainly very functional in that regard. They've also included 4K time-lapse functionality. So that's the Pentax K1, a lot to be excited about. Obviously Pentax's first full frame sensor and the higher quality that results from that larger sensor, a, uh, a high resolution sensor, 36 megapixels, excellent implementation of their uh, five axis image stabilization, which has a lot of different benefits for photo and video, and just a really rugged, well-designed physical body with excellent button ergonomics to, meet, to keep you out of the menus and keep you focused on shooting rather than messing around inside the camera. So if you want to learn a bit more about the K1 or you want to try it out, come into one of our stores. We've got stores in the Sydney CBD, Bondi Junction, Miranda, Melbourne CBD, and the Brisbane CBD. You can also order the K1 on our website at www.digidirect.com.au. Take care.